cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin right now are nearing all time high levels and are in an upwards trajectory. And that has some people thinking, should I start mining cryptocurrency? And a lot of people don't have the money to put down uh, on getting this uh, uh, very costly uh, mining rig or ASIC miner. So they might think, should I use the computer that I have to mine cryptocurrency? And that is a question we are gonna answer today. Okay, so one of the main things uh, for mining uh, that's gonna be a big determining factor is which cryptocurrency you are mining. Some of them use uh, your processor as the uh, main component for mining. Others are graphics card based, um, GPU miners, and depending on which one you choose will factor into whether or not this is something that you should uh, get into. Another thing to think about is if you do GPU mining, which is arguably the easier of the types of mining that you can do, uh, it also depends on what graphics card you have. Because if you say have like an old uh, GTX 1060 three gigabyte card, uh, you, you might have issues with finding a cryptocurrency that you like that you wanna mine where the DAG file size uh, is lower than the three gigabytes of VRAM that the card has. So if you have something like I have where I have the GTX 1080 eight gigabyte card, I can mine everything right now because none of the DAG files are at that size at this moment in time. The other thing to consider is how much time you want to put into it. For me right now, I am not BIOS editing my cards. I am not uh, overclocking them for mining uh, mainly because I the main purpose of my computer is for uh, gaming so I don't like switching between gaming and mining every single uh, evening and morning in order to do whatever task I'm trying to do at that moment in time and one thing uh, you could technically do is you can go to uh, what to mine dot com slash coins and there you will be able to go through and you can add in um, what graphics card you have. Like here, I just highlighted the 1080. I have one of them. Um, previously, what I have done is I had a 3x580 and a 1x570 rig put together. And that is roughly what I had. I actually had a little bit more. Uh, mega hash and drop the power down just a little bit and you can even add in your your cost of power which is really nice and mine I included taxes and everything then you can click calculate and you can actually see which coins are most profitable for you to mine so if I still had that mining rig I would be making in profit over two dollars a day uh, from that miner by mining uh, ethereum and I would be making close to two and a half dollars a day if I were to move over to the nice hash algorithm, which for some people is significantly easier, but I prefer to uh, I, I prefer to use a different pool just to promote the decentralization of the coin because nice hash is so popular. The other thing to consider, especially if you are going to try and mine Ethereum, is Ethereum recently announced that they are going to be moving to Ethereum 2.0, which is staking based. So mining on Ethereum will eventually be killed off. So when you're mining to a pool and they have a payout limit, you need to consider, do you have enough time to mine to reach that payout limit before it switches over to Ethereum 2.0 um, in its full version? Um, and the other thing with, uh, these coins that you have to keep in mind is the difficulty of mining because the more people that hop on uh, does not necessarily mean the rewards go up the rewards are set per block so if you have more people trying to get the same amount of reward the profit per person ends up being pushed down which is what you see with these uh, difficulty rises 
as popularity rises and demand rises. But demand also brings up the price, which also brings up the profits. So it's a balancing act between everything going on. And the other thing to think about with Ethereum is they do difficulty bombs that uh, just absolutely, uh, you can see the instances where it has happened in recent years where it has absolutely dramatically cut down the difficulty rate, which makes it then easier for you to uh, be profitable the less difficult it is. Um, and typically they do a difficulty bomb about once a year and the last one was in December of 2019, kind of right at the begin, right at New Year's of uh, 2019 to 2020. So we are just about due for a difficulty bomb based off of history. So that could mean Ethereum gets even more profitable, but that will also mean that more people will be trying to get into it. So it's all about what you want to do, whether you want to partake in it, um, whether you find it profitable with whatever card you're using. And so, for instance, you know, with my mining rig, I was making, uh, you know, close to what would today be close to $2 a day if it was still running. Whereas if I plug in my, uh, if I plug in my stats for my current gaming PC, I am only making about 40 cents in profit per day but I am not mining 24 seven. So I am not actually making the 40 cents per day. I'm typically only mining at night and you know, somewhat through the day, a little bit before I go to bed, a little bit after I wake up and it comes out to about mm, nine, nine to 11 hours a day. So I'm really only making half of this amount. So really, you know, 20 cents is, is a good day of uh, profit for me with, uh, my gaming PC. The other thing to consider is, is that's 20 cents that I wouldn't have with my PC just sitting there, especially since, uh, especially if you're one of those people that leaves your PC on overnight uh, for updates to take place. That way you don't have to wait for them in the morning. You can just set your PC up to mine and then you'll actually make a little bit of money back from doing that, um, depending on the time of the cycle. Now, a warning, depending on when this is watched, because we are in an uptrend in the cycle, it is very easy to find uh, profitable coins to mine. However, in the bear markets like we had uh, back in uh, the middle of 2018 um, or even the middle of 2019, it was really hard to mine for profit because the price action was going downwards and it was really hard uh, on uh, miners to be profitable during that time just because dr prices were dropping so much. Now if you go through all this and you decide you do want to start mining, one of the pools that I recommend is Nanopool for Ethereum mining. They also have uh, pools such as Ethereum Classic, Zcash, Monero, Raven, and recently they've added Conflux. Um, I do Ethereum. I've, I've also used Nanopool for Ethereum Classic and Ravencoin. Um, and I've had good results every single time. Um, they've, they've been reliable with getting my payments to me once I've hit my payout threshold. Um, I've never had any issues with that. The only issue I'm having right now is with being able to change my payout limit because you can change them. Um, as you can see here, there is a minimum of 0 0.05 for your payout uh, limit, which will still take quite a long time, especially if you do this on a gaming PC and you only have the one graphics card to contribute hash power. Obviously, the more graphics cards you have, the more hash power then you'll have and the better and quicker you'll be able to mine cryptocurrency. You can also see the maximum payout limit is 20 Ethereum, which is amazingly high and would take absolutely forever if you're doing it with one graphics card. Um, I even with my mining rig, I have never mined a full 20 Ethereum in all my time. And I've been an on and off miner since November of 2017. And I have not mined 20 Ethereum total myself. But with uh, Nanopool, they also have walkthroughs of what you can do for a step-by-step, -step, uh, the pool information, 
frequently asked questions um and they 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 have uh tutorials uh, they have walkthroughs on different miners so you can use like the claymore miner uh to connect to nano pool you can use a uh, nano miner to connect to nano pool um there's some others uh that'll all connect to it and uh, that'll be the algorithm that connects to uh the pool itself another thing you will definitely want to have uh if you do decide to mine is msi afterburner it is a really good way to control your fan speed and uh your clock speeds that way you're not going to completely burn out your card um if you you if you start mining and you don't pay attention to your fan speeds and all that you, you can easily overheat your card to what would be considered a uh, dangerous level for the components in the card itself um, so I would highly recommend having MSI afterburner uh, that is what I have used since the very beginning to control uh, the thermals um, and the power of uh, my graphics card that way I can protect my uh, cards and keep them mining for as long as I can and then looking at the miner itself I use Claymore Miner. Um, that's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, you can use Nano Miner. You can use the Nice Hash, um, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Claymore is just my preference. It's what I, it's what I first learned on, and it's just been uh, the easiest for me to understand. Um, but essentially, it gives you a config file that you can then use to name your mining rig um, to to change certain settings on your card um, to show uh, to input what address uh, you will be mining to um, I would recommend uh, getting a wallet on your phone like Coinomi or something like that really simple um, for doing that uh, I would not directly mine to say like a coinbase account or Binance account or anything like that I do not recommend doing that um, I would recommend mining to a wallet where you have control over the wallet keys. That's just a part of decentralization that is very nice to have. But Claymore Miner makes it really simple to set up and they have a start file that that's all I have to click every night and it'll it'll take care of everything from there after after you've got all your configurations set up and it can run as as long as you have a connection to the internet it will run until you stop it or it encounters some sort of issue which rarely happens for me and then once you're done mining and you exit out it'll create a log and you can actually go back and you can see what happened uh, with your miner during that time how many uh, shares were confirmed or rejected with your miner how long you were mining uh, at what point in time you were able to uh, get a share um, see how much power uh, you're consuming, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, it's, it's all right there for you as, as essentially a ledger. That, that's, that's what this is creating is a ledger to the blockchain, and that is uh, your history of uh, mining. So all in all, it is going to come to what your choice is on if you want to put the time into it and if you think you have enough time before the difficulty is too high. Um, it also depends on your graphics card. You know, if you've got a, say, a AMD 470 4 gigabyte card that might struggle compared to somebody who's got a brand new uh, RTX 3080 where those things are absolute powerhouses at mining. So it really depends on your own system, how much time you want to put into this, and really how much tweaking you want to do. Um, you can do as little or as much tweaking as you want to get as many profits as you can. So I hope you guys learned some things today. Uh, obviously I hope more people uh, join the cryptocurrency space. I think there's a lot of room for growth within the community. Uh, there's, It's going to be a real fun time over this next year or so. Let me know down below in the comments if you decided to mine or not. And as always, Check the links in the description. Thank you guys always. See you on the next one. Bye.